Back to our top story now. The defeat of the For the People Act in the Senate yesterday. The vote was along party lines. Not a single Republican supported it. GOP lawmakers say the bill includes too much federal government overreach. Now Democrats are seeking alternative ways to push back against voting bills Republican lawmakers are passing on the state level. So we want to bring in Nancy Cordes, who was at the White House, to talk a little bit more about what happened yesterday. So, Nancy, yesterday um, during Vlad, the show that Vlad and I do at the 9 o'clock, I had said, you know, the chances of this bill moving forward are slim to none and slim left town. We all sort of knew that this was going to be the outcome. So I guess the question is, why bring it to a vote to begin with? So, uh, you know, it seems counterintuitive that you would bring forward a bill that was bound to fail. Sorry. That always seems to happen right when we start <laughs> talking, Anne Marie. Um, but actually, it, it did achieve a, a few notable things. First of all, it forced the entire Democratic Party to come together behind this bill. You might recall there was one notable holdout. It was Joe Manchin of West Virginia who said that he op opposed this voting rights bill. And the fact that they were holding this vote. He didn't want to be left standing on the sidelines. So it pushed him to release a rundown of the things that he could support. And he said, OK, I'll go ahead at the end of the day and vote for uh, vote to move this voting rights bill forward as long as I can put forth my alternative. Um, and, and so at the end of the day, what that shows both the Democratic Party and Republicans is Democrats are now united in the Senate on this issue. That's something that that didn't exist before. Uh, beyond that, it sends a message to moderate Democrats who care about voting rights that, look, nothing more can happen on this issue unless Democrats do away with the filibuster so that they can pass bills like this along a straight party line 50 vote uh, instead of needing to get 60 votes to push forward legislation, something they're never going to be able to do on this issue because they're so unlikely to get Republican support. So it's a signal to, to Democrats, uh, both in Congress, outside of Congress, to say we've taken this as far as we can unless we take that next step and do away with the filibuster, which is obviously still very controversial among moderate Democrats. Mm -hmm. So uh, President Biden was a supporter of H.R. 1, which is the other name for this act. Um, what is the next move for the Biden administration in regards to this issue? Well, you know, it's hard to say what the next move is. In a statement last night, the president yeah. said he was going to be having more to say about this issue next week. But beyond that, there doesn't appear to be much of a plan. We've got a couple things going on here. Uh, this is an issue that has been of, of great importance to the president for a long time. And, and many Democrats believe that, uh, you know, they're, they're facing an existential threat in the next election if they don't pass voting rights. At the same time, this president has a very crowded agenda. And as we've just discussed, it's very difficult to see what the way forward is on voting rights in the Senate right now. And so he faces a dilemma of how much political ex capital to expend, how much of his time to expend talking about this issue when it's not clear that it's going to do any good. Uh, that, however, is incredibly frustrating to progressive Democrats, both in Congress and outside of Congress, who care about this issue, who say nothing is going to happen without the president using his bully pulpit, shaming Republicans, showing Democrats that they need to continue to fight. They say, look, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 would never have passed if Lyndon Johnson hadn't expended all that political capital, thrown his weight behind it, twisted arms uh, and kept on it until the bill passed. They argue the president needs to do something similar here. So Senator Manchin supports the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, but you know ma many people have pointed out that the the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the For the, For the People Act cover very different things, though right. they would certainly work in conjunction to expand voting rights. Um, can you tell us the difference between the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the For the People Act? Yes. So the John Lewis Voting Rights Act is narrower. It essentially reinstates some protections that were stripped away when the Supreme Court struck down portions of the original Voting Rights Act back in 2013. So specifically, what the John Lewis bill would do is to say to uh, areas, states that have had a big problem with voting rights, that have uh, restricted voting rights recently, if they wanted to make more changes, they would have to 
get those changes pre-cleared by the U.S. Department of Justice. So uh, those are restrictions that are meant to prevent states, particularly in the South, um, who have, have a history, uh, from doing things to restrict voting, particularly for minorities. Uh, the, the other bill that, um, you know, that Democrats tried to move through yesterday does a whole bunch of other things that are very important to Democrats. It expands early voting. Uh, it, it, it expands access to, to ballots, it increases federal funds for election security, expands same-day voting registration. So that bill sort of does all the other things that are important to Democrats beyond the John Lewis bill. And that's why uh, Democrats really see these two bills as partners. And, and they argue that if you really want, um, you know, to, to enact voting rights in this country, you kind of need to push both of them at the same time. Mm-hmm. Nancy Cordes, thank you very much. You're welcome.